Lily is the first brawler of the two new brawlers coming into this next season of Brawl Stars. And today, I'm going to put her 1v1 versus every other brawler in Brawl Stars to find out how she does and, more importantly, show you how you should be playing her. Lily is a mythic assassin and is part of the Enchanted Trio along with Cordelius. Now, you'll be able to switch to her on the Star Road when she is released or pick her up a week early with an in-app purchase. And, of course, if you do, I would really appreciate you you using code Lex. Lily's main shot is a single strike from her dagger that deals 2400 damage at max level. She also has a single ammo bar so she'll never run out of shots. With 8400 hit points at max level she is quite tanky for an assassin with this much mobility. Not only does she have fast movement speed but her super teleports her behind her target from quite a long range. It's this super that is the focus of her entire kit and let me just say this straight away without her super Lily gets thrashed by most of the brawlers in the game. Case in point, here's what her standard base level interaction against Barley looks like. Yeah, not pretty for an assassin. But after playing her for a while, I realized that she is meant to be played much more like Cordelius, where you build up your super first before initiating battle. And also, just like Cord, her super auto charges when an enemy is in range. And to make the most of her kit, you're going to want to equip her first star power called Spiky. With this star power, your first attack on somebody after teleporting will deal an extra 1200 damage. Now this is a crucial star power because she cannot put out a lot of damage really fast after her first initial hit. The way she unloads and reloads her shots is very slow, so time between shots while consistent with one ammo bar it's very slow. Now understanding that, let's see how she does against the damage dealers. As we get things underway with the damage dealers, you'll notice that I'm starting each match with Lily's super. Now normally, I don't do these tests with a super, but Lily's super is her kit. She is very weak at toe-to-toe -to -toe combat due to the long time between attacks, so it made sense to do it this way. With this, she takes out some brawlers without any issues at all, like Rico or Spike because of their low hit points. But even getting the drop on somebody doesn't ensure you victory. As you can see, Griff has no trouble bursting her down before she can even get off the second shot. Chuck's able to do the same, and Chester makes her disappear just like a party trick. She does get Shelly down to one shot before her band-aid kicks in to help her come out on top. Pearl, however, absolutely shreds her, and while she obliterates Colt if she gets the drop on him, with Tara, it doesn't even matter because before she can get off a second shot, she's gone. Now these are just tests, and in a game, it's going to be a very mixed bag. There are some brawlers here that you should have no trouble initiating battle and taking them out. If you get the drop on a brawler with 5,600 hit points or less, then flat out, it is over. There is no counterplay because you're gone before you know it. However, some brawlers will be able to turn the tides on Lily. If you're playing a brawler like Nita and you have a super ready, just drop Bruce at your feet and let him soak the damage for you, but you will have to be careful because Lily's shots do pierce. If you're at range with Eve and you see a super coming your way, that might be a good time to use a gadget to get away, which will waste Lily's super as it does not work unless you hit a brawler. Hitting a wall will Will not allow her to teleport. That being said, you might not ever even see it coming if she uses her first gadget called Vanish. With this gadget, she will go into the Shadow Realm. This is a great tool for getting out of trouble if you are about to die, as well as you can use it to gain position or sneak up on someone, although while in the realm, just like with Cordelius, you cannot see your teammates or your enemies, and that might land you in trouble if you appear next to a tank. So Lily is an assassin, and assassins don't normally like to target tanks to attack. And while there are a few interactions here that she wins, like against Rosa, for the most part, even if she gets the drop on a tank, she will still end up on the losing end. I mean, her super puts you right at the feet of a bull with a shotgun. What'd you think was going to happen? While some brawlers like Primo take a little longer to finish her off, others like Daryl erase her without hesitation. It's a very close fight with Meg, and she does come out on top, but if Meg were to have her super, then don't even think about it. Now Hank also wins but it is very close and the battle against Frank does take a while because Lily has some good amount of health but in the end the results the same. Now BB she does beat but that's only because she can use her super first and without that super she loses against every single tank. 
Now, in a game against the tanks, this is a fight that you probably don't want to pick, but there are some exceptions. You could equip her with her other star power called Vigilance, and with this, you gain 15% movement speed whenever somebody is inside your super range. And this could come in very handy for either getting away from those tanks or staying just outside of their range, but in general, I like her other star power better. Now, the artillery brawlers are mainly throwers, and if you've played Brawl Stars at all, you know that the throwers don't have the most friendly relationship with assassins. This one is plain and simple. If Lily gets the drop on you as an assassin, you're dead. Goodbye, end of story, you don't even have a chance to respond. Without her super though, brawlers like Dynamite and Barley can actually beat her toe to toe, which further reinforces how slow her time between attacks actually is. Now as bad as this looks, in a game, it can actually get worse. First off, she can always use her Vanish gadget to sneak up on a thrower and take them out before they can say, don't touch my canary. But also, her other gadget is deadly to them as well. It's called Repot. With this gadget, whenever she has her super ready, she can use her gadget, and instead of her super being a shot, it actually becomes a thrown one where she can teleport to wherever she chooses, and that includes going over a wall. So yeah, you think you're safe behind that wall as a thrower? think again. Against the marksman, this is a pretty lopsided affair. As we've already seen, brawlers with less than 5600 health are in serious danger of getting ganked by Lily, and one by one, these marksmen step up to the plate, and one by one, they get stomped without hesitation. Now, Bonnie in cannon form does survive the initial onslaught, but her time between shots is very similar to Lily, and she started this fight off with a disadvantage, so she ends up losing. Once again, we see a very bad matchup for most of these brawlers, and in the game, there is going to be very little counterplay. Now, some brawlers like Maisie can use a super and push her back or use a dash to get away from her. But others like Piper, who even do have a knockback, never get a chance to use it. Combine that with her gadgets and she's going to terrorize long range brawlers. Unless she misses her super, then it's game on. Lily is an assassin, so seeing how she compares to the other ones is fun. Once again, assassins with low hit points are in for a world of hurt. Like my boy Crow, he gets countered hard by her, and while Cordelius has been strong for a while, these brawlers are actually very similar in many ways. After her initial burst, Stu only has 200 hit points left, but he still manages to get off all of his shots before losing. Now, Edgar's goes down to 1,000 hit points at first before Fisticuff kicks in and he comes out with his scarf on top. Buzz and Sam are basically assassin tanks and her lack of damage after the initial burst hurts her as she loses pretty easily. Now, in a game, this is purely a game of who gets the drop on who. Every single one of these assassins can take Lily out if they're the ones to go in first. Lily is very much an opportunistic assassin, so choosing your targets wisely is key. Support brawlers are not known for being incredibly strong brawlers, and yet some of them are quite stout, like Pam, and Lily doesn't have enough in the tank to beat her. Also Doug, who has just too much health and healing. However, the rest of these brawlers? Well, they're going to have a very hard time matching up against Lily. If she can get her super to land on them, then... Flat out, they just don't stand much of a chance of surviving unless they have teammates near to help. Kit's buff to his attack was good, but not enough for surviving Lily. Now, in a game, these brawlers do have some counterplay. Gus might be able to use his shield to survive long enough to get a win or have his teammates help him out. And Gray can just teleport right out of there in time. All in all, though, this is a pretty rough matchup. If you're playing a support brawler and Lily is on the field, then always be aware of where she is and hope your teammates are there to help. Now our last group of brawlers has 14 brawlers in it and they really vary in terms of style and power. Some of them like Griff can take out anyone up close and Bo, well he's been really strong lately. If Ems was in her max damage area, she would have easily won and Gail makes it a fight but still gets sent back to the nursing home. Mr. P can't get double damage on his suitcases and loses and if Lou can get off his freeze, well then he wins but alas, it's over too quick. Squeak takes too long to deal his damage, and Willow, well, she just doesn't have enough time to do much of anything. Otis comes close, but Gene, well, he just can't handle the pressure. So then, you've seen Lily 1v1 versus every brawler in Brawl Stars. Just how good is she going to be? Well, this one is actually an interesting one. Her kit is very good. Both star powers, both gadgets are well thought out and can really turn the tide of the game, but on the downside, 
her time between attacks makes her a brawler that can't deal a lot of sustained damage. Now if you can get to a brawler with 5600 hit points or less, then you win. End of story. However, you're going to have to be careful because there are many brawlers who can burst her down in the time it takes for her to reload and unleash one attack. Overall, I think that she will do well enough in most modes except for Heist. She can't deal that much damage to the Heist safe, but she can use a gadget to Shadow Realm past the enemies to get that damage. In Brawl Ball, she can make some really great plays, but she might have a hard time on defense without any knockbacks, stuns, or on offense with no wall breaks. Gym Grab, I think, is going to be a great mode for her, and if she can get rolling with the help of her gadgets, she will wreak havoc in modes like Wipeout and in duels. Overall, she very much reminds me of Fang without the ranged component. Actually, it's more like if Fang and Cordelius had a baby. I don't know how that would work, but if they did, the result would be Lily.